Uh, science! So, D-Man, um, we spent a couple weeks away, and now we're going back to space, so don't get scared. Uh, I've been preparing. Okay, good. I, 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 this is kind of random to bring this up in the middle of the show, but I'm going to anyways, because I feel like, and I've been meaning to tell you about this show that I started watching yesterday. Ooh, the first? The first. Is it good? I haven't checked it out it's yet. It's phenomenal. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Sean Penn is a monster. He's such a good actor. Um, they had a whole kickoff event. Hulu did a whole kickoff event in New York City last week or the week before for this Hulu original called The First, and um, one of the guest speakers was none other than our friend astronaut Nicole Stott, which was really great. Yeah. Um, And actually, my wife and I were going to put it on the other night, but it was like at the end of the night, and we had enough time. We knew we had enough time to like watch an episode of something before we were both going to be asleep on the couch, and I didn't want to start a new show Let me and tell like you, have it be that. You got to be ready to watch the second episode because the first episode just... Sets it all up, kind of. It leaves you slack jawed uh, and, and just devastated. Cool. Yeah, it. I got. I cool. got chills, dude. I got cool. chills just talking about well, it. I can't, Anyways, I can't wait to go start it. I cannot wait <laughs> so to go start it. So I like kind of witnessed the scariest thing that could happen in science. So now I'm ready for our science segment. All right. Well, this isn't that scary. It's actually really interesting. This was a headline that I read, and I had to reread it because I was like, "Is this what? What is this? This is science." It, the headline was, Nuclear Pasta is the Strongest Material in the Universe. And I, of course, like all of you out there, went, Nuclear Pasta? I mean, I know what that is like when I'm like reheating you know, leftovers in the microwave or something, but that's not what they're talking about. That so, joke. So, yeah. So what this is, is this all stems from a neutron star. Now, neutron stars are what are left when the core, the iron core... Um, of a supernova collapses and you either get one of two things from that you either get a neutron star or you get a black hole okay and we know this this is what happens in the universe these violent explosions are very energetic and occur um when they are at least eight solar masses become become unstable against its own gravity and then um under this weird possible thin atmosphere that's created in a, in a neutron store, star, um, it creates a kind of crust around the star. So it's almost like a planet. Think like a planet. Like a planet has this crust and then there's the energy inside of it. Yeah. Um, even though this is a ball of energy, there is this crust that kind of happens on, on the outside of it. This is a material consisting of a lattice of nuclei in a gas of electrons. Now think back to your eighth grade science, you know, like with neutrons and electrons and protons. And uh, and as you go deeper into the crust, these nuclei take on shapes that are exotic. They're not shapes of circles of, or oblongs that we know in science. It's this exotic shape. That's why they're deemed nuclear pasta. And I have two different graphics to kind of show you this this first one is showing you as you go from the outer crust into the inner core of the neutron star what it looks like on the on the the outer crust is the red with the blue dots okay and that's like you look it's this gas of electrons and then these nuclei are these blue dots and then it happens again once you get farther in with all the gravity but that middle area the long flat and then the tubular stuff that's what they call nuclear pasta because it's this pasta phase. It, it looks like little pastas. This even they really they looked at it and they're like, yeah, it looks like pasta. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. We'll call is, it this fucking is pasta. 3D models of some of those lasagna. things. Lasagna. Yeah. Spaghetti. Gnocchi, spaghetti, waffles, lasagna, defects, anti spaghetti, and anti gnocchi. Um, uh, which is wow. crazy. Scientists can name things whatever the hell they want to make them Please. understand it. Please tell me it was Italian scientists. I hope it was. It has to be. <laughs> I hope it was. Um, so this is basically an extremely dense material inside the crust of neutron stars. Now, just to give you a little bit more of what a neutron star is, every time we've ever seen a neutron star be created, they're anywhere between 5 and 10 miles across, which isn't large, but they are at least one and a half times the mass of our sun. Wow. Yeah. So think about one and a half times our sun fitting in the the size of, like, the island of Manhattan. Whoa. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's massive. So 
um, again, to get a little bit more sciency on you, but below the crust, these competing forces between the protons and the neutrons cause them to assemble shapes in these long cylinders, these flat kind of planes, and that's why they they dubbed it lasagna and spaghetti. So it's just energy just freaking out, freaking out inside of this extremely heavy, hard correct crust. Correct. It's wow. this it's this crust that really shouldn't be in a ball of energy. That's like I shouldn't be either, and it's just like it's one of the wow. coolest and craziest things that happens in the universe and we're still learning about these because we're now getting to the point where we have the technology to actually look at these in reality you know like we knew about them forever with like old school telescopes and stuff but now with like thanks to tess and the hubble telescope and that kind of thing we can look so much farther into the universe and And eventually these things explode this is after an explosion oh yes sometimes we talked about it on a show uh, i want to say Oh gosh! A couple months ago, we talked about it. Where two we uh, um, the Hubble actually viewed two neutron stars colliding together, right, and creating this weird well of gravity, and that's where we started to really understand that holy crap, gravitational waves are a thing. Yeah, and we mapped them for the first time ever in human history. Right, I remember that. Right, yeah. so th- so they th- things can still happen, but neutron stars can just be a neutron star for hundreds of millions of years too. Uh, um, so it's just this really heavy, crazy thing just floating around the universe, it, probably pulling everything into it with this insane gravitational right, force. Right, it's just. Incredible. It is incredible. Dr. Matthew Kaplan, the postdoctoral researcher at McGill University, said the strength of the neutron star crust, especially the bottom of the crust, is relevant to a large number of astrophysics problems, but it isn't well understood. Dr. Kaplan and his co aquifers successfully ran the largest computer simula- simulations ever conducted of neutron star crust, becoming the first to describe how this breaks down. Um, the initial findings of this material, this nuclear pasta, really connotate that this could be the strongest material in the universe. Again, this is going to get a little sciency on you. I had to look this stuff up. Um, there's a, something called a shear modulus, which is the shear strength, the strength of something that um, – a math problem that you can you can figure this out the strength of something how many gigajoules it takes to shear it off right okay right. diamond which is one of the hardest materials we know of yeah. okay has a shear modulus of 478 okay. okay in our gravity this material they are predicting has a shear modulus of 10 to the 30th power. Now, again, that's very sciencey, I know, but think if you think about it, 10 to the 30th power is 10 and then 30 zeros behind it. Whoa. And put that towards 478. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, mind-blowing stuff. It also has a breaking strain, which again is the strain, um, I- another math problem that measures how much force it takes to break it apart has a breaking strain of 0.1 which is way higher than any material that we've ever found on earth or have observed in the universe so i mean it's weird because we're 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 talking about cold steel knives and swords yeah um but the the weapons are measured in the same way because you want it to be able to hold an edge which is the the strength the sheer strength but you also want it to be able to take impact and not break. Right. Which is which was the other strength. The sheer modulus. Right. Right. So it's it's um it's rare that you'll find something that can keep an edge that can also take a hard blow. Right. Right. And that's what sword makers are always trying to do and samurai mixed different alloys and made a different right. core that was flexible but the edge kept an edge because that was the the sturdier stuff. Right. So how does this science actually give any practicality? Because there's only, will we ever, first of all, be able to get our hands on this material? No. More than likely not. No. Because how would we? We would have to figure out a way to get close to a neutron star to harvest it. No. Not going to happen. No, it's going to suck us in and murder us. Or we'd have to figure out a way to make our own. No. And also suck us in and murder us. Yes. So uh, scary space stuff. So those two things aren't going to happen. I thought you said it wasn't going to be scary. But what's interesting about this is if the more we research this material this nuclear pasta it can give us insight on actually how to manipulate things 
to a nuclei level, to the atomic level, and it might actually help us to make stronger materials because of the knowledge we learn from this strongest material in the universe. Well, if you think about it, this material is the best material to deal with space right. and space travel. And energy, space energy. Yeah. yeah, and if we were to get anywhere close to cr actually creating something close to this or learning something from it, we could be creating things to better travel through space. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's one of those discoveries that it's like, wow, we'll never be able to witness that probably firsthand, but just the knowledge of it might... 100% change what we know about astrophysics, what we know about physics, what we know about strength of material. You know, like it really might have a lot of applications moving forward as we do more research about it. I mean, you got to think a tiny little piece of it must be like thousands of pounds. Yeah. That's, yeah, right? That's insane. Yeah. That's it's it's crazy. It's, it's mind boggling stuff, but I thought it was really neat. And I couldn't not talk about nuclear pasta i know right it's, you can't you can't pass up space lasagna cannot pass up space, mm, space i know lasagna. we're talking about crusts and shit i'm hungry mm, now love it